you meditate, you're making a promise to yourself. You want to keep something in mind. In this case, it's the breath. And so you want to stick with that promise. And if you're just getting started, you know that the mind is probably going to wander off. So the promise is that as soon as you catch it wandering off, you bring it right back. Because the promise you make to stay with the breath is a skillful promise. You're working on some very valuable qualities of mind. We all need mindfulness. We all need alertness, regardless of our activities. So we want to strengthen them. Mindfulness is the ability to keep something in mind, like you're going to keep remembering to stay with the breath. And alertness is the ability to watch what's actually happening. And to that you apply ardency, which means that you really stick with it. You really try to remember. You really try to be alert. This means that when you're Wandering off the breath, you catch yourself doing that, you come right back. You don't allow the mind to wander around and sniff the flowers and look at the sky or whatever you've got work to do here. And then when you're with the breath, you try to be as sensitive as possible to how it feels. When you breathe in, where do you feel it in the body? And here we're not just talking about the air coming in and out of the nose, but it's the whole sense of movement in the body that brings the breath in, brings the breath out. Where do you feel that? Where are the sensations easiest to follow? Allow your attention to settle there. And allow those sensations to be comfortable. Don't clamp down too hard on them. We're not trying to hypnotize ourselves or putting ourselves into a trance. We just want to be able to follow the feeling of the breath as it comes in, as it goes out, and allow it to be comfortable. So you may want to experiment to see what kind of breathing is going to, breathing is going to feel best right now, whether longer breathing or shorter, deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. Think of this as an opportunity to explore. You're not just clamping down on the mind. But you're simply directing it to an area where you haven't really paid much attention before. Here's something new you can learn. How the breath energy feels in different parts of the body. What kind of breathing is energizing? What kind of breathing takes your energy away? What kind of breathing is relaxing? What kind of breathing do you need right now? Try to get in touch with the needs of the body and then breathe in a way that helps to supply those needs. And if the mind wanders off, just bring it right back again. Just stick with this. Remind yourself you're doing something really important here. When the Buddha talks about motivating yourself to stick with the practice, this is a part of ardency. He usually uses two types of reasons. One is heedfulness, the realization that your actions make a big difference in your life. And if you're not careful, you can create a lot of suffering for yourself and other people. And so what do you want out of life? Do you want suffering or do you want happiness? Why do you want happiness? What kind of happiness do you want? Short term, long term, long term. What is that going to require? Well, at the very least, it requires that you not be harming other people, because if you're harming them in order to gain your happiness, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to come back and try to destroy your happiness. So you want a harmless happiness. You want one that lasts, something that's based on something solid, and the only place you're going to find that is in the mind. So you've got to train the mind so it can find that happiness. Because if the mind is not trained, it's going to create all kinds of harm for itself and other people, other beings. So that's a combination of heedfulness and goodwill or compassion. The other way of motivating yourself is with a sense of self-esteem. Here you are, a human being. 
you've got a mind that has all kinds of potentials. And do you want to let those potentials go untapped? Or when you're making a promise to yourself, are you going to be a traitor to your promise? One of the big problems of modern society is that people don't stick with their promises. They don't regard them as important the way they used to. remember when I was staying in Thailand. We had no cell phones. We didn't have phones at all in the monastery. This meant that if you promised to come at a certain time, you had to get there at a certain time. And people regarded it as a point of honor. So here we are, promising to yourself, regarded as a point of honor, you really want to do this well. The Buddha sometimes would make comparisons with soldiers going into battle. Some soldiers, he said, seemed brave and solid until they saw the dust of the approaching army. and They didn't even see the army, they'd just see the dust up in the air and they'd run away. And others would be able to maintain their bravery for a little bit further and then, then they too would run away. This other person who really would stand fast and was able to come out victorious. There was an honor that went with that. And so it is with the meditation. There are bound to be problems, there are bound to be distractions, but you don't let them get you down. Sometimes just the thought of sitting for a whole hour is enough to scare people away. That's like the dust of the approaching army. You haven't even seen the army yet, and you're already running away. Now you're sitting here and you find you've got some pains, maybe, there are some distractions, maybe. Are you going to let them get you down? And take it as a point of honor that you're not going to do that. It's just not, it's not simply a matter of gritting your teeth. Here we learn how to use the comfort of the breath. So when there's pain in one part of the body, you don't have to focus your attention there. You can remind yourself there are pains in different parts of the body, and they come and they go. You've experienced pain before. Sometimes you can sit for long hours doing all kinds of other things. You can put up with the pain. Here you're going to sit for just an hour and you're breathing easily, breathing comfortably. Focus on the parts of the body that are comfortable. Now, that's one of the ways. <clears throat> one of the ways of building up your stamina is to focus on where your strengths are. What gives you energy? What gives you encouragement? This part of the mind that says, hey, you can't do this, or you're going to give up. Well, don't believe it. There are many different voices in the mind, and you have to figure out which ones do you want to side with, because you have the choice. So stick with the voices. If this is something skillful, this is something important. so important that you want to be able to figure a way around whatever difficulty comes up. You've got the breath here as your friend. One of the big problems in meditation is when people get exasperated at their meditation object because they find it hard to follow. Remember, the breath is your friend. It's what's been keeping you alive all this time. And here's your chance to get to know it well. So to maintain your stamina, take advantage of the strengths you've got. Take advantage of the comfortable sensations in the body, the positive attitudes you have in your mind. That sense of heedfulness that says, okay, you really got to do this well, because there's danger down the line if you don't do it. The sense of self-esteem. A sense of honor that says, here I am a human being, and do I have to be a slave to my fears and thirsts? Do I have to obey my thirst for the rest of my life? Do I have to obey my fears for the rest of my life? Here's a chance to develop an internal sense of honor and dignity. So even though there may be distractions, you don't give in. You just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. And 
can stick with your promise all the way to the end of the hour.